Hello, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we're just going to wait another minute or so before we begin. Um, but uh, we're excited to talk to you about We Will Chicago and uh, meeting in a box. So stay tuned. <laughs> It looks like we have just over 50 people. So I think that's a, a good number to start with. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Christina. Great. Good morning. Um, thank you for your interest in hosting and facilitating a meeting for We Will Chicago by joining this training today to learn more about piloting the Meeting in a Box Toolkit. We're excited to have you with us. Um, my name is Christina Harris. I'm the Director of Land Use and Planning at the Metropolitan Planning Council. MPC is a policy and planning organization founded in 1934. We are dedicated to shaping a more equitable, sustainable, prosperous, and civically engaged Chicago region. I am joined today by Chloe Gurren Sands, Manager of Health Equity and Planning, and Debbie Liu, Community Engagement Associate. MPC is working with the City of Chicago to conduct this training, and the three of us will be trading off presentation duties throughout this meeting. The goal of this training is to provide you with the information you need to pilot the use of the Meeting in a Box Toolkit to conduct a successful engagement session to inform We Will Chicago, the city's first plan in more than 50 years. MPC is also joined this morning by some City of Chicago staff who I will ask to introduce themselves now. Uh, let's start with Gabby. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gabriela Jurasek, and I am the Assistant Commissioner of Community and Digital Engagement with the Department of Planning and Development, and I'm very excited to be here. And hi, everyone. I'm Skylar Laramore. I'm the first deputy for policy on the mayor's office team, um, and I'm leading this effort alongside many of my counterparts in the Department of Planning and Development. So, so excited that you're here with us this morning. Thanks for joining us today. Don't worry if you have signed up for this training a while ago and forgot what this is about. A meeting in a Box is a public engagement tool designed for community groups, stakeholders, and residents to come together and share their thoughts on a specific plan, project, or initiative. It encourages group conversation, discussion, and a deeper level of self-directed engagement. We hope that you are able to host a meeting during this initial pilot phase. Your feedback on this will help us shape and determine the challenges and successes to allow for better refinement and greater implementation into the fall and summer of 2022. Ultimately, the goals of Meeting in a Box are to increase the number of people participating and we will provide additional opportunities for engagement, incorporate in input into planning activities and discussions as part of the process. People feel more invested in planning efforts and are more likely to participate in the future. Uh, I'd like to start this meeting by having everyone introduce themselves using the chat function. Um, please provide your name, organization, preferred pronouns, and one thing you like to do in your neighborhood. If you are able to edit your name on screen, please do so. While we wait for that, um, I wanted to remind everyone that during the session, uh, please ask questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And you may also type your questions and comments into the, um, the comment chat function box. Um, so as a reminder, this session is being recorded and we will share out some of the common Q&A from the session afterwards. Thank you so much. Oh, I still get muted sometimes. Today's training will last approximately 90 minutes. Today's agenda is shown on screen. It includes a welcome, um, which we're in the process of doing now, and we just did. Uh, next, we will review the goals for today. After we review the goals, we will provide a brief overview of materials from the Meeting the Box Toolkit designed for We Will Sh Chicago engagement sessions. After reviewing the materials, we will complete a sample discussion and activities 
with some time at the end for feedback on this training and we will Chicago generally. As Debbie just mentioned, if at any time you have questions, please feel free to ask them by putting them in the Q&A box. You can also use the chat box, but it's much easier to use the Q&A box for questions um, from the point of view of making sure that we understand who is asking what and what the flow of the information is. If MPC is unable to answer the question, someone from the city who's attending today may be able to answer it. And if any of us, all of us cannot, we will then document the question and provide you with contact information for additional city staff. The goals for today's meetings are to learn, learn more about We Will Chicago and what the plan can accomplish, to learn about what is in the meeting in a box toolkit and how to use it, and to practice the discussion around a key question around a specific pillar topic that is in need of valuable input. The city wants to ensure that everyone in Chicago has the chance to contribute to this plan and sees these meetings as a meaningful way to engage with residents and stakeholders so that your feedback shapes the planning framework. I will now turn it over to Skylar Laramore um, to provide a brief overview of We Will Chicago and where the Meeting in a Box Toolkit fits into engagement goals. We know that some participants today are very familiar with the process and some have not heard much about the plan yet at all. So this overview will help ground today's conversation. Thank you so much, Christina. Um, thank you everyone again for being here. This is a historic moment for the city of Chicago. The city has not had a citywide plan since 1966. We know that citywide plans are common practice all over the country. It's very common for cities to chart a course for the next five to 10 years and then return back to the document to see how they're tracking and hold themselves accountable to progress over time. We know that a citywide plan created in this moment now must center equity and resiliency as we are rebuilding uh, the city and, and re rebounding from this devastating pandemic. And this is a time for us to really accomplish bold things that you see on the screen. So a citywide plan can help set criteria and metrics to truly drive equity and resiliency in the city in an in a all hands on deck kind of way. Next, citywide plans can self set standards for neighborhood and regional plans that would be, continue to be created after here, and how do we make sure that they're aligned with a broader citywide vision for where we're headed? The best citywide plans can help align budgets, capital projects, and policy priorities, and can lead to innovation around public financing and create better standards for trust building within civic and community engagement to not just shape planning processes, but policy making processes and governance overall for the city of Chicago. Next slide. This shows for how we're approaching the planning process. So this was a product of a lot of intentional conversations in the fall of 2020. And again, this is a three year planning process. So we're just right in the middle right now. In the fall of 2020, we talked to over 200 different people through small focus groups and community meetings, as well as peer learning sessions facilitated by the Metropolitan Planning Council to learn how other cities approach their plan and what makes it successful in terms of community engagement. Um, how our, what we're driving towards in this plan is, is reflected on the screen. So there's two principles that are the North Star of the plan, equity and resiliency. There's five themes which are truly the roadmap for our process that we're using to make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable to fidelity in both our process and our outcome for what we're creating in the plan. And lastly, there's seven pillars that I'll detail in a number of slides that hit at key quality of life drivers to be addressed through the recommendations in the citywide plan. The next slide will show you one of our principles, which is equity. And then two slides will show you, uh, and the next slide will then show you resiliency as well. I won't get into the minutia of our specific wording on those definitions, but we will be sending these slides out after the fact for you to read um, in, in, at your own leisure. Next slide. So these are our critical five themes of We Will Chicago, and I will pause on this for more of an expansion. Historical reckoning and trust building. Uh, this is an important theme of the plan because it, it acknowledges that we need to understand the legacies of past plans and policies uh, that have impacted communities, namely communities of color in ways that have, uh, that have further reinforced inequality and oppression. 
Um, there have been many policies that have benefited some communities and burdened others. So we need to adopt that lens as we're developing this, this plan in an intentional way. This also acknowledges that there's a history of broken relationships and trust um, challenges between communities in the city. So how do we use this process as a way of rep rep repairing some of that broken trust to bring people in early to formulate a collective vision for where we want our city to head. The next is systemic evaluation of equity impact. So this acknowledges that for any recommendation that we're creating through the planning process, we need to understand how that recommendation will then uh, be experienced by uh, residents in our city, such as you know, disaggregated by race, ethnicity, gender identity, disability, and more, because we know policies, if they're not examined carefully, can have uh, detrimental impacts to those of those identity groups. Um, in particular, we'll be utilizing a tool called the Health and Racial Equity Impact Assessment Tool for many of the recommendations that come up throughout the course of the plan to ensure that we're having conversations grounded in those impacts and how we mitigate any negative impacts from policies. The next is accessible and meaningful community engagement. That's why many of you are here, I'm sure. We need to use this opportunity to meet people where they are, where they are, to create different ways to engage in the planning process, whether that be official advisory groups or more virtual opportunities for folks sitting on their couch to answer questions about We Will Chicago. And meeting in a box is one way that we're living this value of accessible and meaningful community engagement. Accountable, accountability through shared metrics and transparency. This acknowledges that you can't impact what you can't measure. And so as part of the citywide planning process, we will be building public facing metrics by which city residents can hold us accountable to success or lack thereof over time. This also acknowledges that a plan is only as good as the implementation, implementation structure designed around it. So we can't just have a plan that sits on a shelf, but we actually need to create a body for implementation for which we have folks external to the city, everyday residents sitting in that group and making sure that we are driving towards the outcomes of the plan that we're setting. And the last is sustain interagency and cross collaboration. This isn't just an effort of the mayor's office and the Department of Planning and Development. We acknowledge this is an all hands on deck affair. There are city agencies, departments, all engaged in the process of recommendations development alongside all of the volunteers and members of the advisory committees and the pillar teams and many of you who are now our partners in uh, creating the, the draft We Will Chicago plan. Next slide. This shows you the seven pillars of the plan, so the key quality of life drivers that the plan will address. We're really excited that our plan is very unique and that we're hitting on some pieces that have long not been included in conventional citywide plans, such as arts and culture. And then you'll have more standard recommendations that we might think of when we think of city planning, such as transportation and infrastructure. This plan is not going to go into the minutia of specific zoning recommendations in individual neighborhoods. Think of it as setting an overarching policy framework. And obviously it will recognize some of the need for different types of investments and policy strategies in different types of neighborhoods based on the unique characteristics that they're combating from long histories of disinvestment um, or, or pressures around gentrification. But we won't be getting into the minutia of maybe uh, floor level air ratio and all of those uh, specific zoning terms. The next slide, this shows you a bit about the structure of who is helping create the plan alongside all of you who are now volunteers engaged in the process. So we did lead a very intentional open application process just this year to select over 150 different volunteers and community-based partner organizations um, who all applied to be part of the citywide planning effort. Our selection process was intentional in choosing people that have both lived experience, professional or just personal interest in these issues. Um, and many of those are now engaged in the form of either the advisory committee, which is looking at the plan overall and thinking about these themes and how we're living in them and both our process and the outcome of the plan. But there's also all of these volunteers that are engaged in individual pillar research teams. So for example, um, the housing and neighborhoods team, you know, includes a cross section of folks that might be students there. Uh, they might be advocates on uh, affordable housing issues, and it fully runs the gamut. 
Um, these groups have been meeting for a number of months now. They've had seven meetings so far, and they've really started to develop some of these highline ideas around guiding questions. And now we're in a point where you all are going to be joining up with us to start to think about how can some of the work of these teams so that as they're drafting some of their uh, recommendations later on in the process, they're doing it in a way that's informed by all the feedback that you'll receive from your meeting in a box events. Um, and I can obviously go into more detail about some of the structure of the teams themselves, but I'll say that in case there's additional Q&A that comes up. The next slide shows all the means by which we're gathering community engagement at this time. Um, so we did start in the fall, the summer and fall of this year with some really unique experiences led by Honeypot Performance Collective uh, with a team of artists, organizers spread all throughout the city that were doing really creative, uh, engaging ways to, to capture input on the citywide planning process, whether that be storytelling, whether it be um, you know, photography exhibitions or more conventional sort of community conversations around what public uh, health might look like at a neighborhood scale. We're really excited to have used all of those opportunities to bring people in in ways that they might not have con conventionally thought about coming in to engage with the citywide plan. And those events will continue through the end of this year. Community partners are, are all on board alongside all of the other research team members to really guide the guiding question development and the plan, the, the plan, the policy recommendation process within the research teams. Community partners, as part of their commitment to this process, are facilitating 50 community events between now and the end of February. Um, so they're doing that alongside all of you as you're hosting your meeting in a box events as well. And all of these engagements will really help us ground truth what is coming up in the citywide plan and to create a document that has fidelity to the vision of many of our neighbors, many of our uh, residents in the city of Chicago. Meeting in a box toolkit, that's why you all, you all are here today. We're so excited to use this as an opportunity to pilot how we get to a broader amount of audiences. Um, those people that are in your network that you wanna convene, their voices, their perspective on this plan are critically important. So this is a, a perfect moment for us to be engaging them to shape the, the plan itself. And lastly, we are creating virtual forums. We know not everyone wants to come out to a meeting. Um, so we're creating ways that folks can engage and fill out a survey in their own time. You may know that there's an active one that's already available on the website right now. If you do wanna do a share out some of that content in addition to hosting your meeting in a box, uh, we're using as many modalities as possible in order to, to meet people where they're at through all of these channels listed here. And the next slide just shows you that this, again, is a three-year planning process. We are in the process uh, right now where the research teams have started to meet. They're developing guiding questions. They're starting to think about objectives. Um, and right now you in hosting your meeting in a box meeting, you'll be helping gather some ideas that will help the teams refine their objectives. And when we move into creating the draft policy frameworks by midpoint of 2022, all of the input that you'll have gathered will help, we'll use that to refine the, the draft document. Then in 2022, we're broadening out our engagement even further. So we'll be doing much more extensive field teamwork. We'll be showing up at community events all throughout Chicago in grassroots ways uh, to meet as many people where they're at as we uh, final, finalize the draft policy uh, act, actual plan itself to then be provided to the plan commission for adoption. 2023, um, as well as the full city council. So that is the final sort of step of the citywide planning process. And once it's approved and adopted, then we really move into the implementation phase and ensuring that um, all of the goals that we set forth are being realized for the residents of our city. Um, and I'll just note one last piece, engagement is critical throughout the way. So it's iterative as we are receiving feedback, it's going back and being integrated into the work of the research teams. Um, in particular, the work that you're doing now, one more time, is going to be critical for our research teams as they finalize their objectives and as they start to develop some of their policy recommendations. And we hope that you'll consider um, hosting conversations uh, throughout the duration of the, the rest of the We Will Chicago process, because there will be continued opportunities to continue to engage your networks in this work. So once again, I'll, that's the end of my set formal section here, but I know that was a lot of content that we just shared. 
So we do want to create a moment. If you do have uh, specific questions that you want to drop in the chat or in the Q&A function, we'll try to identify if there's some patterns. So commonly asked questions, and we'll just address a couple in real time. We'll also aggregate any questions that we can't get to because of time and be sending out a, um, a uh, Q&A after today's meeting as well. And Skylar, there's a question in the chat about how the members for the research teams uh, and community partners were selected. Yeah, great question. Um, so I'll drop one link in the chat, which we'll also send around after the fact too. And that gets you a sense of, gives you a sense of who is actually on both the advisory committee and all the individual research teams. So the Department of Planning and Development led an open application process for anyone who was interested to apply for a role in the citywide plan, which we amplified through many of our major channels and our community partners. We got about uh, 500 applicants for all of, all of the various teams. Um, and then we had a volunteer committee of 60 volunteers who helped review and score all of the applications with a, a set aside rubric that you can actually see on the website. Um, so there's a link to a PDF there where you can see much more detail about the intentional selections process that we adopted, um, as well as information about sort of the, the span of sort of identities and demographics um, that was selected in the final plan. So obviously, you know, we, we were thinking about all of the perspectives that need to be gathered that haven't traditionally been gathered when, we, when the city has done citywide plans back in the 1960s. Um, but we also acknowledge that maybe not everyone knew that they had an opportunity to apply to be part a formal part of the research teams. And that's why the work of the meeting in a box is so critically important. We need to create as many channels as possible to, in order to supplement the work of the research teams, to guide it, and to inform the citywide plan document. And someone wanted to see the last slide, so maybe we can go back. Tyler, there was also a question about um, equitable engagement um, across the city, um, both on the north side and in other neighborhoods. Um, uh, particularly Black communities. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for that amazing question. Um, I know it's something that we're, you know, we, we think we're thinking long and hard about as we develop this process. Many of the, and, and we see it reflected in some of our actions related to the artist organizers. So many of the artist organizers uh, were, were doing initial engagements within communities that had long been excluded or voices not heard and past planning and policy making processes, many of them located in Black and Latinx communities. And we also had a mobile artist team that was doing engagements all throughout the city in places where there's sort of a larger congregation of many residents of Chicago, um, such as a sort of movies in the park as an example. Uh, we know that those, you know, we need to amplify many of those engagements so that we make sure that folks in community, folks in neighborhoods actually have the opportunity to hear about the plan. Uh, we know that a lot of people, you know, even, even if we meet them where they are, they have, there's a history of broken trust and bad relationship between the city and neighborhood residents. So that's why we're implementing models like meeting in a box, like the meetings that are facilitated by community partners, because we know that trusted voices matter. And it's so, so critically important for you all who have deep relationship um, to be able to, you know, bring relevance to this historic moment that we have collectively to chart a different path for the city of Chicago and to be able to do that in a way that you can bring forward issues that are most pertinent to the folks within your neighborhood and your identities. So um, that's why we see this as sort of a full picture of both the activities the city will continue and all of these that we are so grateful that you'll help us convene as well. I wanted to add on to that, Skylar, too, that um, so th this phase that we've been in in 2021 has been about really collecting kind of big picture ideas and concepts and seeing where there are commonalities across these um, pillars that we may be able to use. Going into next year, you know, the hope is that we will actually have some um, ob objectives, plan objectives that we will be bringing to the community for feedback on. So there's, there's been different kind of stages. And so 
once we have objectives put together, I think it's going to be much more effective to get um, really solid feedback from communities. We're also talking about doing uh, a, a larger street team presence, um, being out at more public events. Um, so th this is kind of just the beginning of kind of a surge of, of large community engagement that is to come. Uh, and I do see a question about uh, non-English speaking communities. Um, we have representation from a, a large segment. Actually, a number of our community partners are in this meeting um, right now, who um, I'm sure would be happy to connect with you specifically about the audiences that they're serving. Um, but we uh, will be doing, uh, hope, hoping to do additional training sessions exactly like this one in additional languages. So um, I've actually this week been in conversations with Skylar about uh, doing a, a Spanish language uh, version of this webinar um, in, in the next couple of months as well. Um, we may also be able to do a, um, other languages as well and have uh, or have interpreters available in, in the meetings to come um, as we're going through this. So that is definitely part of this. This meeting in a box kit is also going to be translated into multiple languages uh, available for download so that other communities will be able to run their meetings as well. Great, uh, thank you for that presentation, Skylar. Um, and those were great questions. Now that we all have some shared knowledge about the We Will Chicago planning process, we will dive deeper into what is exactly in the Meeting in a Box Toolkit. The first document we will review is the Meeting in a Box Facilitator Guide. It includes information about the following items that are included on the slide. So the We Will Chicago background, um, which Skylar just provided, and there's a presentation deck included. Um, sample invitation, hosting technology instructions, discussion questions and activity, host meeting facilitator form and instructions, meeting in a box community, input form and instructions, and meeting resources, uh, the presentation slide deck, and then also a facilitator script. And Chloe is going to shift to showing us what this PDF looks like. So here's the guide. The guide includes all the materials that are in the box, as well as information to help you move through each section easily. In the PDF, you should be able to click on the sections in the table of contents to jump to different areas. So section one, the facilitator guide, will tell you the key responsibilities for facilitators. They are indicated by the three red stars. As a facilitator, please be prepared to facilitate the meeting discussion and document key takeaways from the conversation. Provide an introduction of We Will Chicago by using the presentation deck that's included as part of this kit and ensure that meeting participants understand how their input will be included in the process and provide follow up information for the city's We Will Chicago team if it's needed. This page also includes some information for facilitators on how to set up the meeting prior to the meeting date, it includes suggestions for the number of meeting participants as well as preparation tips. The next couple of pages outline what should happen during the meeting and the suggestions for allotted time. The entire meeting is um, suggested for a runtime of approximately 90 minutes. The introduction should take around 20 minutes and starts by having the participants introduce themselves. We suggest that some ground rules be set next, letting people know the overall meeting structure, goals, and timing, as well as the space you and the participants will be creating together. This is the time to also present the presentation deck about We Will that is included as part of these materials. The anticipated time for the discussion portion of the meeting is 60 minutes. After in introducing the discussion prompts, provide some quiet time for participants to write down the reactions to the questions prior to sharing. This guide also provides tips on how to facilitate the discussion and how to navigate difficult and challenging situations that may arise. We will also review this as part of our sample discussion facilitation activity today. As the facilitator, make sure you document key takeaways from the conversation as the meeting goes along. You will need to provide this information after the meeting concludes. The conclusion and wrap up portion of the meeting is assigned approximately 10 minutes. Please thank participants for attending and provide them with time to fill out the community input form. 
It is crucial to get feedback from participants on their experience at the meeting so that we can continue to improve engagement activities for We Will Chicago and have a better understanding of who is being reached by these efforts. We want to ensure that the planning process is as inclusive as possible and have participants filling out, fill out these forms will help us refine future engagement efforts, in particular, our further rollout of the Meeting in a Box Toolkit for later in 2022. And I think Skylar and Gabby um, went in early, discussed earlier about some of those, what some of those future engagement efforts could look like. After the meeting, the facilitator should submit a post-meeting facilitator form that documents key takeaways from the conversation. These documents can be submitted via the We Will Chicago website and links are also provided in this guide. So section two of um, We Will Chicago is the background section and it includes much of the same information that we shared with you about We Will Chicago at the beginning of the meeting. This includes general information about We Will Chicago and details about the principles, pillars, and themes. It also includes some of the most frequently asked questions that we have received to date about We Will Chicago and the citywide planning process. As Skylar mentioned in, at the beginning of the presentation, equity and resiliency are two of the principles guiding the We Will Chicago planning process, and the full definitions are included here for reference. The five themes um, are historical reckoning and trust building, systematic evaluation of equity impacts, accessible and meaningful community engagement, accountability through shared metrics, and transparency and sustained interagency and cross collaboration. The guide provides uh, their further definitions as well. There are also seven pillars, arts and culture, economic development, environmental climate and energy, housing and neighborhoods, lifelong learning, public health and safety, and transportation and infrastructure. They are listed here, but they're also further defined in this document um, on page 13. They are also included in the presentation deck. As Skylar noted in her presentation, We Will Chicago is currently in the research phase, and the guide provides additional information about what that means. Um, this phase will wrap up in next spring, and then We Will Chicago will be moving into the policy and action phase, which Skylar also outlined. This guide includes a couple of pages of FAQs, and Chloe's just showing you the definition pages for the pillars, which, as I said, is on page 13. And so this guide also includes a couple of pages of FAQs, as there may be a number of questions that participants may ask during the meeting, many of which the city has received before. One example is the question concerning how we will Chicago can ensure participation and inclusion from all races, ethnicities, and zip codes. In relation to this question, uh, we would like to reiterate how important it is for us to receive feedback from meeting participants to help the We Will team guide and refine engagement and outreach based on this feedback to ensure that the process is truly inclusive. If any questions arise that are not in the FAQs in this guide, please document the question and email it to wewill at cityofchicago.org. A member of the We Will team will provide an answer. Section three includes instructions on sending out invitations for participants to attend your meeting, as well as a sample invitation. If you are planning a session, it might be best to set an invitation list and have attendees use a free platform such as Eventbrite to register for the event. It is really helpful for people to register in advance, which is why we're including this Eventbrite guide here. The guide also includes step-by-step -step instructions for the platform, um, but you can use any platform that you would like. Let us know if you have any challenges setting up registration on Eventbrite and we will help you troubleshoot. Um, section four includes hosting technology instructions. It includes information about setting virtual meetings. Um, and you can also decide what is best for your audience. You can meet in person or host your session virtually, but be mindful that if you do not have a paid organizational Zoom account, you can create other accounts on uh, such as Google Meets for unlimited time use. Um, if you are using a free Zoom account, um, you are limited to 40 minutes, that, which is something to consider um, in setting up that meeting. Here on the sheet, you will see tips and step-by-step -step instructions on how to create and join via Google Meet. Uh, no matter how you're hosting your meeting, whether it's virtual or in-person, please make sure you're space feels welcoming, accessible to all. 
we provided some tips here and some overall ground rules for engagement. These tips include a courageous space agreement to ensure that the space you create with participants are able to be honest and open. We will model some of this today during our facilitation later. Um, section five, the discussion questions and activity section includes the actual tools you will use to guide your meetings. For virtual meetings, you'll use a Google Jamboard and a link to the template is included. If, are you, if you are using the Jamboard, please make sure you save your own copy before you begin. And Chloe will um, pull up the Google Jamboard to show how you can save a copy. All right, hi everyone. Uh, when you click on that link in the facilitator guide, it will take you to a Google folder that has um, copies of all of these Jamboards. So in order to save one to your own drive, um, make sure you're signed into your Google account. You can just right click on the one that you wanna save and choose make a copy. And that will automatically put a copy of that in your own Google personal Google Drive, uh, then you'll be able to find that and you can rename that uh, to, you know, fit whatever the name of your meeting is. And then this we is also what want to, yeah, we also want to walk through the frames of the Jamboard too, um, just so folks know what it is. Right, there's a question here that says, what's a Jamboard? Um, Google provides these opportunities to create these Jamboards, which are these um, virtual engagement tools where people can write on stickies and provide information in a way that everyone can access it if they're online. Um, so there are seven frames that are included as part of each board. Um, frame one will always be the definition for the pillar that was created by the research team. And so each one of the, the, the actual white screen boards are called frames. And then Chloe can show how you can move between each one of the frames by clicking the arrow at the top. So frames two through six um, on each one of the board includes pillar questions that were also developed by the research teams during their working sessions. For the discussion activity, we suggest choosing one or two of these questions to focus on. The seventh frame of the board um, is called the bike rack frame, where additional thoughts and questions that may not be directly related to the questions being discussed at the meeting can be shared and documented. Um, prior to your meeting, please select the questions you'll be discussing and delete the other frames as to not confuse participants. And uh, when you're working on the Jamboard to delete that frame, uh, go up here where it shows uh, these boxes with the slides and expand the frame bar. And then you can uh, just hover over the one that you want to delete, click these three dots. And when you are in your own version, it will give you the option to delete it. Uh, you can also copy it, which can be useful if folks just have a lot of thoughts about a particular question and you need more space and more stickies. So I just noticed that there are a couple of questions in the chat around the Jamboard. Um, the Jamboard is a, a link that's part of the facilitator guide and the facilitator guides are all on the We Will Chicago website. Um, so it's in the discussion and activity section of, which is the section we're on right now of that facilitator guide, It's I believe section five. So I just wanted to address that. Um, and then also for, I think as um, Gabby mentioned, the facilitator guide and the materials are gonna be translated into other languages. Um, I, I am not sure, 100% <laughs> sure what those other languages are. I will let Gabby answer that question. Um, but I do wanna address those before we move on to the next part of the guide. Uh, yeah, just as, as uh, to mention on the language, um, we, we have truly just finalized this document as of this week. So now that we have, um, a somewhat uh, pilot version of the toolkit, we can hand it off to our um, translations teams to be translated. Um, as of right now, we were discussing having them translate into Spanish, simplified Chinese, um, as well as possibly Polish, because those were the three um, most commonly spoken languages in the Chicago area. 
Um, we can add on additional languages. If you would be interested in emailing uh, we will at cityofchicago.org, if you have any specific requests, um, I can try to accommodate those requests uh, as well. So um, just you know, send us a note and, and we'll try to work that out with you. So the, the Google Jamboard is accessible. You can just, you're able to like um, click on it and to just fill in stuff um, for everyone. And you don't have to use the Jamboard. This was, I think the most available option for people who are hosting meetings virtually because it's easy, it's free and you don't have to pay to use it. And it provides that way that people can document their input via sticky notes in a way that starts to feel like an actual community meeting. Um, our next thing that we are going to demonstrate is the participant activity worksheets that Chloe will pull up, which are hard copy documents that you can hand out to participants when you're having in-person meetings that people can fill out. I just want to also say that what we're going over right now, this, facil this facilitation guide is for folks who are interested in hosting a community meeting. Uh, I think there's also uh, a note in the chat about that, so I just wanted to clarify that. Great. Uh, so similarly, when you pull up the link that goes to the participant activity worksheets, um, it will look like this. You should be able to, um, again, right click on that um, or just open it up. Double click on it to open it. Uh, go to file and then you can download that so that you can actually print it. Um, you can also just print it directly from uh, the internet. So whichever is the easiest for you um, in terms of just how you want to view it. The sheet has um, all of the same questions that are on the Jamboard, just arranged so that folks can actually answer it uh, on pencil and paper in person. Also, if you feel like this is a better option, I know someone put something about downloading the questions into a Google Sheet or the other document, you can also just use this as the setup and provide that to folks virtually as well. Yeah, and also just to note, like, these are all sort of menu options for you to choose from if you have, if you don't think that people will be able to pull up something simultaneous to a Zoom screen, and that's the concern. You could also drop some of the questions in the chat and folks could read them there and respond verbally and you could have a note taker. So think of this as, you know, you customize this in the way that makes the most sense for your understanding of what they have available to them for participation. Thanks for that, Skylar. Um, I think that's right. We're just trying to provide some tools that can get you started that I, we think will be helpful in planning the meeting, but feel free to adapt them to whatever you need them to be to have host a successful engagement session. But whatever method you use, <laughs> please make sure folks fill out something um, because these are the main ways that your, our participants' input will be captured and directly shared with city staff and consultants to be incorporated back into We Will Chicago. As the facilitator, you will be summarizing key takeaways from the conversation, but these forms, these additional forms will also provide additional information to the We Will Chicago team. So the next section in the box is section six, um, which is the post-meeting facilitator form and instructions. Uh, these are the forms and instructions that you as a facilitator will use to submit key meeting takeaways. It includes information about the pillar you are providing input, input on, as well as supplemental materials like the jam boards and worksheets. We will show how to fill this out during our practice discussion session. In section seven, you back, go back up, Chloe. Yep. Sex, section seven of the toolkit includes the forms and instructions for meeting participants to fill out in the last 10 minutes of the meeting. Any feedback on the meeting from participants is helpful to have in order to further refine the toolkit beyond the pilot phase. These can be filled out as a handout, but if possible, we prefer them to be filled out online via the Weeble Chicago website. Links are included um, in the guide as well. Section eight provides two additional resources that will be linked as part of this guide. First, the meeting presentation slide deck it includes a presentation about We Will Chicago and everything you need to share about the background information section. The presentation deck also includes individual slides for each pillar. 
during your meeting, you will uh, provide, you can provide a more detailed overview of the pillars that will be the focus of the conversation by including the slides of the relevant pillars. You can skip or hide or delete the pillar slides that are not relevant to your discussion. So when you're in uh, this, similarly, you will want to go to file and uh, either make your own copy or download this. And then you will be able to delete or hide uh, the slides that are not relevant to your conversation. You'll also want to make sure that on slide 20, that you go ahead and insert the discussion questions uh, that you specifically want your participants to talk about. Second, the facilitator script. Uh, gives you more guidance and sample language to use as you are leading your meeting. You should feel free to use the language as needed and make it your own and make it comfortable for your the content and facilitation. You won't be going into great detail. We won't be going into great detail on the facilitator script during this training, but you do want to highlight and pull it up for two sections. One is the safe icon that indicates what needs to be said and connected to an other icon that shows the presentation deck um, that aligns with the script language. So Chloe is um, highlighting with her mouse. Yep, so here, um, just as Debbie said, you can see there's a, an image of what the actual slide uh, that corresponds to the, to the presentation deck. And then the little megaphone graphic shows what you should actually say out loud. Um, obviously you can edit that to fit your own style, um, but that's uh, hopefully will be helpful. And then we wanted to point out that the script also contains an attendance sheet. So um, if you're doing this uh, as a in-person meeting, uh, we really want folks to fill this out. Um, and, sh and you know, that's how we track uh, kind of how many people that you had at your meeting and stuff like that. So. Uh, an important component, and this is where it's located. So we will be drawing from the facilitator script in our demonstration today. Um, and yeah, then I also I wanted to just point out, there's um, a link at the bottom for some intro slides um, that are in this facilitator script as well, which connects, that has an agenda slide for the meeting as well as the slide um, around the courageous space agreement um, or some of the ground rules. And that link is where Chloe is currently hovering. We will now take some time to answer any questions you might have at this time. So I think there were some questions in the chat about um, uh, when the attendance sheet said neighborhood, that means where they live um, as residents. Um, and then you, and then there was another question about um, pillars. There could be a primary pillar. You can use as many pillars as you would like to discuss. You can have conversations about housing and transportation. You can have housing and economic development, arts and culture with um, infrastructure and transportation. So you can customize all of these tools that we are setting forth um, in any way that you would like. Um, I think there was also some question about um, the Jamboard. Um, you can download it on an app. Um, it could be easier, but we do recommend using it on desktop as it is easier to maneuver and show the screen at the same time if you are doing it virtually. If you are in person, you can um, print out the sheets that we provided, the activity sheets that we provided. You can also use large sheet paper and, and chart it out um, as you would um, if you were meeting uh, in person. Um, let's see. There was also a Q&A question about um, the, the job, I would say the job of the facilitators a lot because um, you are leading the meeting, you're also taking some notes. I think it makes a lot of sense in a lot of these instances to designate a note taker if someone is willing to um, take on that role to help uh, just keep things moving and, and, and on, on, on pace, I would say. 
Also, I think that was the idea partially behind the um, Jamboard and the worksheets so that folks are um, also, there's, there's other supplemental information that's going in beyond the notes that are being provided by the facilitator. So it's, it's not only the facilitator, but there's also these additional documents that are provided to the We Will Chicago team as well. This webinar is available and it's being recorded and live streamed on Facebook and YouTube, Dale. So you, there will be opportunities to uh, review that in the future. Um, Gabby, are you able to answer this other question about um, a master calendar? Yeah, you know, something that's a that's an interesting idea. I think that we'll want to discuss a little bit more internally. Um, you know, we're we're hoping that the the folks that you're inviting to these meetings are you know contacts that you have pre-existing that you know networks that you can connect to whether it's people who live on your block or coworkers um, you know if um, if there's you know kids in a in a classroom you know that would be interested in using this as well so um, you know we also want to be mindful of just the privacy and who you're inviting into these meetings um, so that the folks feel safe, you know, sharing and, and that kind of thing. So uh, it's an interesting idea. We might um, come back to it if there are some larger meetings that will be held. But um, I, I think for now, our vision is that these would all be run privately and and the meeting in a box facilitators, or if you have a, a co-facilitator, um, would be helping curate your invite list um, for, for the meeting. Yeah, and all that to say, we're also doing some events that are being hosted by community partners at simultaneous to many of the meeting in a box meetings. Some of the community partners are keeping those sort of invite only for their specific constituencies to keep them small and intimate to be able to do deeper dive dialogues and others are making them public. And so there will be opportunities for people that maybe aren't part of any of our networks on the call to still engage through some of those public events that will be happening and will really pick up steam in 2022 as well. Um, and the time frame for this is um, I see a question about that, um, is prior to February 11 of 2022. Um, so you can host these meetings during these couple months. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think, sorry, uh, Gabby, I was gonna. Just, just to add on to that. So the discussion questions that are enclosed in this, we'll call it version one of the meeting in a box toolkit are specifically related to the guiding questions that um, each of our research teams have kind of put together to be the overarching um, themes for the, the meeting in a, or for the We Will Plan. We will be doing another version of this kit at some point uh, over the summer once we have actual objectives that are written out by each team. So those are much more kind of solid policy kind of answers and things that we'll wanna get the community's input on. So, um, you know, you can participate now in, in this first phase, or, you know, if it's something that you wanna wait until there's a little bit more, um, you know, uh, structure to respond to uh, with, with your community, you can also do that as well. And yeah, I would just add, Sorry, in order to address one of the questions about how their, the community comments are collected and shared with pillar teams, um, they're shared via the online form um, that Chloe just highlighted. There's a facilitator input form where the facilitator would document the key takeaways and then upload some of the additional materials. And then those comments are then going to be more or less summarized by a legal Chicago team member and provided back to the research teams to inform what Gabby was saying as uh, building out those objectives that then we'll have a larger engagement process in 2022. Okay, I see a couple more questions. Um, can you host additional meetings? So yes, you are not limited to only hosting one meeting. You can host multiple meetings um, and you can do them in any language that you want. Um, and then there's another question about the ideal number of attendees. So that is up to you. Um, we recommend that it should be under 15. Um, it is 
challenge it becomes more challenging the more people you invite into the space because then um, as you are doing the discussion as we will uh, demonstrate later on that um, uh, you want to make sure that everyone gets their chance to talk if they are interested in, in speaking um, but you don't want to also limit some of um, those voices in time so um, that should be up to you in determining how many people you want to have in your meeting. We do say that in the facilitator guide as well. And I think our recommendation in there is uh, around 20. And if it's really the discretion of the facilitator if they feel like they can um, facilitate a conversation with more people than that. Um, and yes, just to be clear, I see a, a question here. Um, it's really for the facilitator to fill out the facilitator input form and then attendees to fill out the community input form and other components of this can be customized to fit your audience and your participants as needed. We are providing some tools to get everyone started and some people will just use the tools as they are and some people will need to make some tweaks to make it work better for them. And Gabby, there is a comment about how soon the recording will be posted. Um, if it's already streamed on YouTube, is it already just going to be there? Yeah, it's on, it's on YouTube as we speak right now. Um, and after this meeting, I'll be able to add it to the We Will website as well. Uh, looks like Brianna also had a question related to um, your, she, uh, they put a statement, we are to engage with our community utilizing two questions from the pre-made list of questions created by committee members. That's right. So each of the pillar research teams has come up with between three to five guiding questions for their pillar. I think as you'll read through them, they're super exciting, very compelling. Many of them are very broad. And so I think it'll fruitful conversations where your participation, your participants can take them in a lot of different directions. Um, so there will be, a, yeah, as you look at the menu of questions, um, there'll be many, many to choose from. But yeah, for the purposes of this meeting, since it, we do want to get deep dive uh, into a, a few things, like we don't recommend that you try to do too many questions because you'll just run out of time. Debbie, do you want to answer this question about the, the stipend question? Yeah, so just, just to clarify, um, there as part of the meeting today, there are a number of folks who are part of our existing research team and community partners. Um, since they have been engaging with us through this entire process, um, they have, you know, they've been working since July and they'll be with us through February. Um, the community partners were awarded a, a stipend of uh, $15,000 to, to be part of that entire process. For this effort here, which is specifically the meeting in a box, there is no additional stipend um, for folks who are outside of the current research teams. Uh, to be holding the meetings. So just wanted to clarify that. You know, I think it's something that um, we're interested in, in thinking about more as we're kind of as uh, building on our budgets. As you may know, the city of Chicago just passed our 2022 budget um, within the week and a half is it, at this point. So we have been kind of aligning um, some possible you know, alternative funding and, and engagement ideas per those budgets that were just approved. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll stay tuned. We'll, everyone who's in this meeting will add you to the We Will Chicago email list so that you can get updates on kind of where this process is going from here. But um, just to, to clarify, there is no stipend for anyone who is just holding one of these meetings. So feel free, oh, Skylar, go ahead. I was, I know that there's a lot that we probably won't get to. So maybe just for sake of time, we can continue to address some of the questions in the chat, but Debbie and Christina, how are we doing? Yeah, that's most of us going to go. Yeah. Um, so if you have additional questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and the chat. We'll continue to monitor it as we go. Um, but now that we've covered the contents of the meeting in the box toolkit and guide, uh, we'll walk through the demonstration meeting and um, see some of these tools in action. Uh, Christina, Chloe, and I will demonstrate uh, how this will work and Christina will act as the facilitator. All right, 
Good morning. Welcome to our meeting about Weeble Chicago, the Weeble Chicago Citywide Plan. We are looking forward to providing our input into the planning process to help shape the plan and share our vision for Chicago. I'd like to start this meeting by having everyone go around and introduce themselves. Please share your name, preferred pronouns, and one thing you like about your neighborhood. So as a facilitator, to facilitator if, I, if we're doing this meeting in person, I would circulate an attendance sheet, um, which is included as part of the facilitator script. And if this meeting was virtual, I would just record their names as they're saying them out loud. Good morning, my name is Chloe. I use she and her pronouns and I live in the Little Italy UIC neighborhood. And my favorite thing about the neighborhood is how many trees there are um, on my block, especially in the fall when they're all changing colors. And hi, I'm Debbie. My pronouns are she, her. I live in South Loop. My favorite thing about the neighborhood is being able to walk um, to work and to Chinatown um, and around the neighborhood with my baby and dog. I'm really glad to have you both here for the discussion today. Uh, before we begin, I'd also like to set an overall agreement about how we will all steward our space at today's meeting. I'd like to start with these principles to create a welcoming space. Please be courteous, uh, listen generously to the experiences and perspectives of others, open-minded, balance the anxiety and fear that can come from hearing others' experiences. Some of us may be pushed to consider ideas that are outside of our current understanding or comfort level. Be honest, speak from your own experiences and perspectives, and please be patient. Balance the desire for progress and action with the need to learn and reflect. Are there any other principles we should add to this agreement for today's meeting? Um, can we add like privacy or confidentiality because um, I'm okay with, you know, putting my name and saying that I was here and sharing my ideas, but I don't want my ideas uh, linked specifically to my name. Is that okay? Sure. I do want to say that um, none of the information you share today will be, link be linked directly to you as a person. Um, most all the stuff is more or less anonymous, except we are we want some general information on where people are coming from, so that we can make sure we are improving our outreach and engagement techniques in the future. Um, but happy to add that to our group agreement. Is everyone okay with that? Yep, I'm okay with that. Great. We will add that. So let's talk about today's agenda. Um, our meeting today will last for 90 minutes. The agenda is shown on the screen. It can also, and so if you are meeting in person um, and you don't want to have any uh, virtual presentations, you can also pass around this as a handout um, for participants. So after we review the goals, I will provide a brief overview of We Will Chicago, followed by the discussion and activity with some time at the end for feedback on this meeting and We Will Chicago generally. So at any time you have questions, please feel free to ask them. If I am unable to answer, I will document it and provide you with the contact information for uh, city staff. The goals for today's meeting are to learn more about Legal Chicago, including what the plan is, what is guiding the plan, and what the plan hopes to accomplish, and to have a discussion about a key question around a specific pillar topic that is in need of valuable input, and how that input will help shape the plan. The city wants to ensure that everyone in Chicago has the chance to contribute to this plan and sees these meetings as a meaningful way to engage with residents and stakeholders so that your feedback shapes the planning framework. I will now provide a brief overview of We Will Chicago to ground today's conversation. So this is the place where as the facilitator, you would use the presentation deck that's included as part of the guide, as well as the facilitator script. Um, which tells you exactly what you need to say in order to present the slides and provide information about We Will Chicago and the pillars. Um, after the presentation, please just pause to see if um, anybody has any questions. So I'm not gonna go over the presentation, so we're just gonna pick up where the meeting would start afterwards. So I'm hoping this presentation help you, helps you understand We Will Chicago more. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'm wondering who's on the research team and how are these people chosen? Sure, that's a great question. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, anybody um, in Chicago is able to apply to be part of the research teams. 
And then there was a group of city staff, consultants, and volunteers who reviewed applications. Uh, the goal is to create teams that are balanced with community residents, with lived experience, and professionals within the subject areas. Are there any additional questions? Nope. Okay. So before we begin the discussion activity, um, I want to start by reviewing the pillar we will be discussing in more detail. Today's discussion will focus on transportation and infrastructure. So by the way, this is how the slide will look. And so it's included as part of the presentation deck. Um, but within the script, there is a much longer definition for the pillar that would be helpful to read. These are just high level bullet points. So the de definition of transportation and infrastructure is um, we will transportation and infrastructure pillar involves the movement of people, goods, and information through the use of private or public vehicles, networks, and systems. We will endeavor to ensure the city's infrastructure assets are equitably planned, maintained, and upgraded to meet 21st century needs. Rail lines, bus lines, streets, highways, alleys, airports, freight, freight yards, waterways, bike lanes, sidewalks trails, power grids, communication networks, and other public and private assets all fall within the scope of this pillar. We will, planning will help Chicagoans enhance their travel and infrastructure options in a connected, well-maintained, predictable, and reliable manner. Um, next slide. As a reminder, I wanna reiterate that your input matters and that all feedback will be noted and shared with research teams to be incorporated into the draft planning framework. Please bring your full self to the discussion and be respectful of other participants' feedback. Today's discussion activity uh, will focus on the following questions. How can we create infrastructure systems that are safe, equitable, and accessible to all, including those with disabilities and the most vulnerable? And how can we establish a framework for equitable planning and decision-making that addresses past inequities in historically marginalized communities? For these questions, um, first I'd like to start with some silent reflection time to think through them and provide some initial responses via the Google Jamboard. And then we will go around the room, round robin style and begin sharing. If you can, uh, please hold your comments and questions until the silent reflection time has ended. I will be taking notes as we go along and at the end of the discussion, we'll reflect back some of the key takeaways I heard in the conversation. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? No. Debbie, Chloe, no? no. Okay. Great. Um, please use the first 10 minutes to write down your thoughts. All right, um, so I'm gonna walk through the Jamboard in a little bit more detail. Um, so you as the facilitator are just gonna want uh, to make sure that once you have the Jamboard set up how you want it, that you're actually sharing that uh, publicly so that your participants will be able to edit it. Um, so just, you can add specific people if you know their information or you can just change it to say, anyone uh, can edit this board. So then folks will be able to add to it. Um, so we've removed the extra uh, slides so that only the two with the questions that we are working on are showing up. Debbie and I have pre-populated this with some of our ideas already, but uh, when you open it up, you'll see that all of them say, fill me in. Participants can double click on any sticky and you can write, um, you know, not Chloe's idea. <laughs> uh, folks can write their idea. They can change the color of their sticky note um, if that's something that they want to do and save it. Um, over here on the left hand side, there's a few different tools that you can use um, to, the main one is just going to be the select arrow, which allows you to actually click on these stickies, move them around. Um, you can also delete them or copy them. If you wanna directly add a sticky note, you can click over here on the left um, and you can just type in that and add it. Um, it will pop up. And again, you can drag that to anywhere that you want it to be on the screen. Um, if for any reason you want folks to be able to add images or shapes, they can do that um, on the side as well as text box. 
And then there's a little feature called the laser pointer, which acts just like a laser pointer. Um, if you want to, you know, highlight someone's idea or uh, something like that, you can actually draw on the screen and it will disappear after a couple of seconds. All right, um, I think turn it back over to Christina. Great. Okay, I see that there are several thoughts um, on the board now. And I do just want to remind you all that if you have any additional questions, there is a bike rack board um, on the last one. So you can write additional thoughts if you have them there as they come up. Um, can we go around and just start sharing um, what each of you wrote for the first question? A reminder, the first question was, how can we create infrastructure systems that are safe, equitable, and accessible to all, um, including those with disabilities and the most vulnerable? Chloe, let's yes. start with you. Okay, so I wrote, um, I want free public transportation. Um, I want to require um, that any new or renovated L stations have elevators or ramps. And I really want us to have a world-class airport to welcome our tourists. Uh, I wrote the uh, rising lake level prevention, uh, bike friendly highways and modernized electric grid. Thanks for sharing these thoughts. Uh, Debbie, can you tell me more about what uh, bike friendly highways could look like? Yeah, perhaps creating special bike lanes on highways. Do you mind if I ask a follow up question? Um, what do you mean by special lanes? Yeah, just like bike uh, bus friendly or bus only lanes, it will be bike friendly lanes. Okay. Great. I'm going to reflect that in my notes. Um, Chloe, can you tell me more about free public transportation? Sure. Um, I think if public transportation was free, that more people would use it, and it would be more um, it would be more equal because everyone could afford to use it. And also, I wanted to say that I disagree with what Debbie said about letting bikes go on highways. Highways should only be for people with cars, and so I don't think that idea makes any sense at all. I don't think that's safe. Thanks for explaining um, more, Chloe. I want to take a second to remind us that it is perfectly okay for us to have different opinions and experiences, and that we can remain open and respectful of each other's perspectives. Um, Debbie's answer is just as valid as yours, and both should be documented as part of this conversation, as this is not an argument. Um, both are valid. Um, thanks for sharing both Debbie and Chloe. I'm going to um, write both of your takeaways down. Okay. Um, Let's move on to the second question. Can you each share again what you wrote? As a reminder, the second question is, how can we establish a framework for equitable planning and decision-making that addresses past inequities in historically marginalized communities? So I wrote, demolish highways, uh, study the harms and, and negative impacts, and shift power to communities so that they can make decisions. And I wrote, um, prioritize connecting communities that are cut off by highways, sharing criteria across our departments uh, for actually accepting infrastructure projects, and then talking to the communities that are the most affected. Okay. Um, thank you both. It sounds like, and I hope I'm summarizing this right, it sounds like you both agree that we should reconnect communities that have been separated by highways and that we should talk to community, community members to have them more involved in decisions. Is that, is that accurate to say? Am I reflecting back your perspective? Yeah, that sounds right to me. Yep. Okay, thank you. I'm going to document both of these great ideas as part of the takeaways from today's conversation. Okay, at this time, we are going to bring this meeting to an end. I think Chloe's going to pull up our end slide for the presentation. Great. Thank you for participating and providing your input.
The city wants to ensure that the engagement process for Rural Chicago is truly inclusive. So please let me know if there are other perspectives that we want to make sure are captured and I will include those thoughts in my meeting notes. If you have any follow-up questions on Weevil Chicago, please contact Weevil at cityofchicago.org. We are going to take the last five minutes of this meeting to fill out the meeting in a box community input form, which is located on the Weevil Chicago website, or uh, as I was saying earlier, you can also hand it out as a hard copy document, but then you also have to collect them at the end. Here's the link, here's a hard copy. We do prefer you to fill out online if that is at all possible. Um, it is incredibly helpful to receive this information so that we will the We Will Chicago team can improve its engagement activities and outreach efforts. So please take five minutes to fill it out. Chloe is going to pull up the meeting in a box me input input form to walk through what that looks like. Yep. Uh, so this is the form that your participants will actually fill out when they're done with the meeting. Um, there's also in the uh, materials, you know, you could print out um, the, the print version of this if you're in person for folks to fill out as well, um, if that is what they are more comfortable with. But the online version is here. Uh, folks can share their organization um, or who hosted the meeting, um, if that's applicable, and the host's name. And then uh, we're asking questions about, you know, how satisfied is your participant with the quality of the meeting that they experienced? How likely are they to participate in future We Will Chicago engagement opportunities? What types of uh, events would they like to see? So events hosted by their alder person, community organizations, artists, et cetera. Uh, and then, there's a couple of questions that use a one to five scale. So for example, uh, on a scale from one to five, did the meeting increase your understanding of the goals and objectives of We Will Chicago? Uh, we give kind of uh, marker posts for one, three, and five. Uh, one being, you know, I didn't understand this at all. I don't have a good understanding of this. Uh, and five being like, yes, I feel like I understand everything now. Um, so folks can choose um, along the scale. And then some uh, optional space for them to explain their answer in more detail if they like. Uh, so did the meeting increase their level of trust that their input can actually make a meaningful impact on the plan? Space to explain. And then uh, did the meeting increase their level of trust and desire to engage more with the we will uh, planning activities and process. And then if there's anything else that they wanna share about uh, their experience with the event or we will Chicago. And then we are also asking for demographics. So this, um, you know, if anyone asks why, this is a really important part for, um, you know, us in the city to help figure out if we are doing an equitable engagement process, who is actually being a uh, part of the process, who haven't we reached yet um, and, and may need to do some additional outreach to. Um, so this really helps us just figure out, you know, who's in the room, uh, you know, age, gender identity, employment status, race, race and ethnicity, um, and zip code and neighborhood. So then folks can just submit that. We will also, where did it go? We will also want folks, uh, so the facilitator, so in our case, Christina, after uh, everyone is gone from the meeting, Christina will take some time to fill out this post-meeting facilitator form. So similarly, uh, this is gonna be asking for Christina's actual information, which we do need uh, you to provide so that we can follow back up with you if we have any questions or anything is not clear from your notes. The organization, uh, if you are affiliated one and your contact information. Uh, for the street address, we are asking and neighborhood, we're asking for um, if this is an in-person event where the event actually took place, uh, just so that we can 
kind of show that on a map and understand, you know, which neighborhoods um, that these engagements are part of. If you are hosting a virtual meeting, um, you can get a little bit hypothetical here and put in the address of a location um, in your neighborhood where you think the event might have taken place if it was in person. And then we wanna know how many people attended your meeting. Please include yourself uh, and your team in that total number. And then of course, the date that your session happened. We'll ask you which of the pillars that you uh, discussed. So you're able to choose multiple. Uh, there's also an option here uh, to write in another topic if there's something that you discussed that does not fall under one of these um, pillar areas. What were the specific discussion questions that you had uh, prepared for your group to talk about? And then uh, we would love it if you share with us, uh, you know, photo of the documents that you worked with on your session or provide the link to the actual Jamboard if that's something that you're comfortable with. And then we want you to summarize what some of the key takeaways uh, and major points were of the conversation that you had and then you can submit that. Thanks, Chloe. Um, so all the information provided in the post-meeting facilitator form will be reviewed by a member of the Wheel Chicago team. Takeaways will be broadly summarized and provided to the research teams, um, which we mentioned previously, but they will, the research teams will also have access to the uploaded documents as well. At the end of the pilot phase, we would like to host a follow-up meeting with those who did host meetings and facilitate meetings to hear more directly about how ways um, that the Meeting in the Box Toolkit can be improved. Uh, we also share with facilitators how the input they provided was used by the research teams in developing the draft planning framework. And we would like four facilitators to share that information more broadly with all of their meeting participants, as well as a way to follow up um, from the engagement session. So we want this to be a transparent process that helps build trust. And by closing the loop and um, incorporating feedback, we hope we can do that. So um, before we wrap up, we have about eight minutes left, I think, for um, questions. And I know a few more came into the Q&A box and have been happening in the chat. Yeah, I think that there's a couple questions that um, I want to point out. Um, one is, um, maybe Gabby or Skylar will be able to have, answer this, but if people wanted to um, do a pre-meeting and uh, demonstrate or work through how to do it virtually, can we set up a, uh, a meeting for, for participants who may be interested in that? Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really sure if we'd be able to accomplish that for each of these meetings that, you know, it's going to really depend on how many there are, and I am a staff of one uh, right now with the city. So um, this recording will be available on uh, the website and elsewhere. And um, you know, if you have specific questions, you know, we may be able to uh, assist you a little bit more by email. But um, I'm not sure we'll be able to hold uh, an additional separate uh, training thing. So I'm dropping the email in the chat for if there are additional questions, which is we will at cityofchicago.org. Yeah, and we appreciate that, you know, obviously we're a one-to-one -one sort of uh, format here, so we can't get into deeper dialogue about some of the ways that, that you could potentially customize this to work for your constituency. So I do want to just encourage you to reach out and we'll have that uh, conversation about thinking about ways to make this accessible. Um, I think, you know, so many of you, you may be considering hosting in person. One talking, not emphasize yet that I want to, is that um, that's that's very encouraged. Masks should, be masks should be required as well as social distancing indoors. That's another reason that you should consider keeping it small and intimate if you are gonna do something in person. Um, I know that that format may be a little bit more accessible to folks that, do not have the technological ability to join something like a Zoom or a Google Meet, um, but others may not be comfortable hosting in person at this time. So I, I just acknowledge that that is a challenge in this time where so, so much of what we're doing and convening is virtual. 
Um, and we're happy to workshop offline with you to think about how we might still achieve this for your for your um, no you care about. You know, there there is also um, services like freeconferencecall.com, uh, which lets you set up a free conference call phone number where you could, you know, do this all exclusively over the phone and have, you know, one person taking notes at home with pen and paper and, and elsewhere. Um, we do just recommend even if you're holding these okay. virtually right. um, or in person, that the the feedback, the post meeting facilitator form, we would just highly encourage that um, a version of that getting uploaded via the website because that's really going to be helping us aggregate all of this data in one place um, to distribute back to the research teams. So um, that that's definitely going to be encouraged uh, regardless of whether you're using people have pen and paper or are, you know, you could totally disregard the Jamboard if that's kind of beyond your scope. Please don't feel that you need to use these exact tools. Um, you know, you can use a Google Doc if that's something you're, that's easier for you or just a word. You know, somebody can be typing replies via word. Um, you know, you wouldn't even need necessarily internet access for that um, if you're going to be using a phone line instead. So this is just one suite of ideas. Um, and again, you're more than invited to customize them as to how you and your um, community can best utilize them. Yeah, I would just like to direct folks to the person participant activity worksheets, which are set up as Google Docs that are very easily downloadable into Word format or just any other PDF format and can be shared around with folks. Um, and so you don't have to use the Jamboard. The, I think the Jamboard is a nice option if you're hosting a virtual meeting, but there is another option also included within the kit itself. And please customize it to whatever format you need to customize it. Um, there is a question about folks who are hosting uh, meetings, how quickly they need to turn around the trans the, the forms. I would say, like, ideally, you're doing the forms as a post meeting activity, like the meeting at ends, and you are making sure you're getting your forms in um, within the next like half an hour to an hour, um, if that's at all possible, just because um, you know, the longer it goes on, the more I think the more likely you are to forget about filling it out and doing it. And so hopefully we can just get those back as soon as possible. Um, I also just wanted to address the concern about the, um, the language around the presentations and meeting materials. Um, one of the reasons why we, we took so much time and effort in, um, to defining what pillars are in the guide and defining what the research teams are and putting all that information into the facilitator guide and into the script because we were hoping that it would become more accessible to a wider audience through your facilitation of the meeting. And so I would say like, take a look at it, make the language your own. I think it's much easier to describe pillar areas as topic areas that you know impact how people live their lives or something like that. And there's ability to change that to fit whatever audience you need. And we, I, I'm hoping um, we've provided enough definition about what those items actually are so that folks feel comfortable and able to do that. And if we haven't, that's the feedback that we want to know so we can continue, continue making the language easier and more accessible to more people. Are there additional questions that we have not covered in our last minute here? Uh, I did answer a question in the chat that I wanted to reiterate that um, people who, even though we demonstrated today virtually, you do not have to do it virtually. There are resources in, this, in the guide that you can do it um, in person. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you do not need to um, reach out to complete strangers or like people you don't know. You can host meeting with your friends, families, neighbors, um, people that are in your network already. So don't feel like you need to organize communities to get this uh, meeting in a box accomplished. So just wanted to reiterate that even though I did mention that in the chat. Yeah, so I wanna wrap up today's training. Thank you all for participating. Um, everyone who attended today's event or is registered as in hosting a meeting will receive a follow-up email with all of the materials and links we shared today. Um, in order for this input to be 
become part of this part of the um, phase we're in for Google Chicago, we just ask that you host a meeting prior to February 11th, 2022. Um, also, I, there was a question around, um, was it around, oh, if there's gonna be another meeting after this, and we would, for all the people who hosted, who host the meeting, we would like to hold a feedback meeting on how the meeting went um, as a separate thing that would occur after all the meetings are hosted, so sometime after February 11th. Yeah, we'll be, Otherwise, all, we'll be sending out all of this material, all of the forms that we mentioned being linked. And I just want to also echo as we're wrapping up, just supreme gratitude to all of you for trying this out with us, for providing all of the great feedback already in the chat and for gathering your community around this vital conversation. This is really a historic moment for the city of Chicago. And we're so grateful that you've decided to be partners with us and having these hard, challenging conversations about the future of our city together. So thank you. Yes, and if you have any follow-up questions, contact information is shown on the slide. You can, for meeting the box, please follow up with me, Christina, or Gabby. Um, our contact information is there. And if you have con any information that is about We Will Chicago specifically, please follow up at the We Will Chicago address. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great uh, rest of your day and a wonderful